I think we hit six figures. You know, my my I, I do these ten surprises every year, and, and one of mine was you know that we hit six figures. I, we definitely take out the all time high. Mm. That could happen in days, right? Sure. Once people realize that these ETFs are taking out more Bitcoin out of the market than is mined every day. And after the halving, it's going to be two or three times mm. that. So it's just supply demand problem. So we had the demand shock and, you know, basic supply and demand, right? If demand goes up and supply is fixed, P1 is higher than P2, basic economics. But if then supply shrinks, right? P2 is higher than P1. Mm. So we're having a demand shock right now, and we're going to have a supply shock in April, where we go from 900 Bitcoin a day to 450, you put those two things together, number go up. Mm. And then we haven't even talked about the FOMO part and the leverage part and the yeah. stupid part where, you know, dumb people play dumb, you know, dumb games and get and win dumb prizes. And people will lever up again, which is not smart. You know, why would you ever lever up an 80 vol asset? Mark Yusko discusses Bitcoin's potential ascent to six figures, emphasizing that his prediction is not a speculative guess, but is rooted in the fundamental principles of supply and demand. This forecast gains significance in light of the scheduled Bitcoin having event set for 2024. Historically, the Bitcoin having event has served as a crucial turning point for the cryptocurrency's value. During this event, the reward for mining is halved, leading to a reduction in the overall supply of Bitcoin. However, Yusko stresses that it's not solely about supply. The growing demand for Bitcoin is also a pivotal factor. This increasing demand is evident in the rising adoption of Bitcoin ETFs, which currently hold over $27 billion in BTC, constituting a substantial portion of the total Bitcoin market. See central banks adopt Bitcoin um, the same way that central banks eventually adopted the renminbi. Right? Mm. So at first, you know, all central banks own gold. Gold is the base layer of money. And then they hold other currencies of each other as a store of value. And then they issue currency on top of that. So gold is the base layer. Bitcoin is digital gold. So at some point, the smart ones are going to say, you know what? I'm going to put some in there. And the, the challenge of that, though, is that doesn't solve the, the problem, the inherent problem of fiat is, and this goes back to the Rothschild family in 1607 when they created the first central bank. Central banking, while, while fractional reserve banking, I believe is a great thing, mm. right? The, the ability to lever up deposits by rehypothecating, you know, nine, 10, 11 times and using fractional reserve, I'm a huge fan. There are other people that don't like that. I believe it is why we can do what we're doing right now. Yes. Sit in nice warm places, even though it's freezing wow. outside and talk in real time in HD. It's amazing. And yeah. I always say, if you don't like set fractional reserve banking, name a country that doesn't have good fractional reserve banking that you would live in. Mm -hmm. I'll wait, because there isn't one. There's no, you know, no, no one's moving to Democratic Republic of Congo intentionally. No one's moving to Malawi intentionally. And, I, I, and I'm not criticizing. It's just it, given a choice, you're yeah. going to go where fractionals or banking works. Right. But central banking is different. What central banking does is it allows you to create money out of thin air by fiat. Yeah. And it's used to finance wars. And that's why the most powerful central bank had the world reserve currency and was the superpower. So you think about the Netherlands in the 1600s was the superpower globally. Are you kidding me? It's the size of Ohio. <laughs> well, they could print money and create mercenary forces that, you know, and then the Rothschild clan, they sent one kid to France. Shockingly, France became superpower. They sent one to the UK. Shockingly, the UK became superpower. They sent a representative over to the new colony in America to set up our central bank. So shockingly, you know, and so you follow that path of money and you follow fractional, you follow central banking, two things happen. One, 
you become very powerful and very wealthy for a very small number of people at the top. I would say, you know, the all seeing eye. But what really happens is the value of the currency for everybody else falls. And I ask people all the time, what's the lowest price you remember for a gallon of gas? For me, right? 33 cents in Totem Lake, you know, near Kirkland, Washington, before it was cool. And today, you know, it's it's three dollars and thirty three cents. It's the same gallon of gas. It does the same thing in the car. It's actually less good because it has ethanol. Gas didn't get better. The money got worse. Yeah. And a house used to cost, you know, ten thousand dollars. Now it's four hundred thousand dollars. House didn't get better. Now they are bigger and they have nicer plumbing and all, but but it's a house. Right. And has the same functionality. And the land. And it didn't get more efficient. It didn't grow. Like my house doesn't grow. It actually wears out. So what happens is the money gets worse. And that's why Bitcoin is so amazing. One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. Will always be one Bitcoin. But we don't price Bitcoin in Bitcoin. We price Bitcoin in dollars or yen or euros. And Bitcoin in dollars just keeps going up. Just like gold. Gold is priced in dollars, not in gold. One ounce of gold is still one ounce of gold. A one ounce coin could buy you a fine person suit for 5,000 years. Mm -hmm. From Cleopatra's time to a suit of armor to Savile Row today, take a one ounce coin, you get a fine person suit. It's amazing. Perfect store of value. And Bitcoin is just digital form of that. And it will ultimately be in central banks. Ultimately, it will be a base layer of money. Fortunately, we'll still have fiat problems. They'll probably get worse, right? Because there'll be CBDCs, which mm -hmm. are evil incarnate, although and it's amazing how fast people will jump on something. Like, I'm not sure Donald Trump knows what a CBDC is, really. I, I, I'm not yeah. sure. He, he might. Yeah. But Vivek does. And Vivek went from running for president to trying to be vice president to whispering in the Donald's ear, hey, you can get a lot of voters if you say you hate CBDCs. Yeah. Bang. The Donald... <laughs> If nothing else, he's a good politician. Right. So that was amazing. And so does that mean we're not going to have a CBDC? Not necessarily, because the powers that be really want them. Yeah. Because if you listen to the BIS guy, he wants to control your right. money. He wants to be able to say, oh, you didn't spend your money by Friday? Oh, it's gone. Oh, you didn't spend the money in the, comp in the companies we like. Mm. Money's gone. Oh, you drunk texted about the president. Your money is not worth anything anymore. I mean, people say that could never happen. Are you joking? Of course it could happen. Easy. Programmable money means control, surveillance. I mean, and it wasn't this WEF, but last year's WEF, this, this guy was talking about, you know, personal carbon footprint tracking. Yeah. And like, are you joking? It's crazy. Really? What does that really mean? It means you're going to monitor where I eat, how I travel, where I travel, what I spend my money on. What is that? That's surveillance. That's not, that has nothing to do with carbon. It has right. nothing to do with carbon. It has to do with surveillance and control. And CBDCs are the same thing. So CBDCs are fiat on steroids, which would be worse than fiat. Governments aren't going to give up fiat until it's taken away from there have been 775 paper currencies in the history of the world. Three quarters of them no longer exist. Governments will always eventually shoot themselves in the head. So, Mark, do you, they're greedy. do you think it's like another 100 years where there's Bitcoin further iteration on Bitcoin, if you want to call it that, that we are able to, to move away uh, where, I don't know, the web you know, is, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a great problem to think about. And mm -hmm. hypothesize the reality is the fight's going to be a lot harder than we think. It's funny, you know, I, I've been talking about, you know, 09 to 15 was first they ignore you. Okay. Then 16 to 21, then they laugh at you. And then 22 to 27, then they fight you. So we're right in the then they fight you. And someone said, Oh, well, we we got the ETF approved. Now we've won. Like, oh no, 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 no. Now they're going to fight harder, yeah. right? Now they're going to try to ban self-custody. Yeah. Now they're going to try, you know, Max and Stacy believe they're going to try to confiscate the ETF, Bitcoin. Like, no, they won't. Well, why not? Because that's like a 51% attack. There'll never be a 51% attack on Bitcoin. 
Well, why not? Because the moment you do a 51% attack, the value goes to zero. So all that money you spent to do a 51% attack, which is pretty much impossible without a quantum computer, so not going to happen anytime soon. But even if you did it, the value would go to zero and you'd have nothing left. So the same thing with confiscation. Let's say the, the Bitcoin ETFs get 25% of all the Bitcoin. That'd be amazing. The price would be much higher. But let's say they got 25% and the government seizes it. What just happened? They didn't kill it. The 75% just got more value. Satoshi himself said, yes, coins will be lost or stolen. Mm -hmm. Consider it a donation yeah. to the community because the value of the asset goes up. Right, Because you got the same value divided by a smaller number of coins. So unless they can get all of them, 100%, not 99, because as long as there's one Bitcoin, it can have a high price and it can be Satoshiized. So they can't seize it. Yes, they could in their minds, oh, we'll, we'll steal a bunch of it and then it won't be as effective. No, you idiots. It's <laughs> infinitely divisible. Because right. it's not changeable. One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. The idiot part is the fiat can go to infinity, literally, which means yeah. everything can go to zero in Bitcoin terms. And there's a lot of discussion now. Preston Pish did a good one on this, and and Gary Cardone's done it, and you know, it, it's it's real, right? I mean, my house priced in Bitcoin just keeps getting cheaper, not more expensive.